Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video in our modeling analysis and design of highway bridges. It's now here that we are at a crossroads and we need to decide what kind of software we are going to use to perform the analysis of our highway bridge. In case you're new to this channel, please notice that this is a continuation of a video series about the modeling analysis and design of highway bridges and now we are about to start the modeling with a software. However, one very important question that needs to be asked is what kind of software are we going to use? But trust me, I tried a lot with Autodesk Robot trying to somehow capture the essence of analysis of reinforced bridges, especially because we are going to use pre-stressed girders, at least box girders or regular girders to model this bridge. Unfortunately, Autodesk Robot's capabilities are kind of not adequate for performing the analysis of a bridge. So we are going to, in this video, show the three most famous softwares are, that are used in the analysis of bridges. And I will tell you later how this video series is going to continue. So with that being said, and without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Alright, so the first question I need to address is why do we even bother and why do we even need a specialized software in designing a bridge? The reason is basically because the general purpose software such as ETABS, Robot, SAP, STAD and so on are unable to capture all the necessary things that you need to do in order to do a structural bridge design. Because there is the ASHTO code and there are so many limitations as to how to use tendons what the pre-stressing force is gonna be, the losses, the stress limitations, a lot of juicy stuff that I actually am planning to cover the theory behind in my next video in the bridge video series. But the reason we are here now is because we want to talk about softwares. So those specialized checks are unable to be captured by general purpose softwares, making the life of the analysis pretty hard to do so. So that's why we need specialized software. Now here we have three possible options of performing error analysis. And I am going to tell you which softwares we are going to use as time progresses. So the three softwares that are found being used are first of all, Meta Civil. And this is one of the highly specialized softwares in bridges. And it has amazing uh, capabilities in the design and checking of bridges. And that's basically the go-to software that the industry here uses. And the bridge I'm going to show you was actually modeled and analyzed using Meta Civil. However, that's not the only software that exists. Of course, here you can have a lot of things. You can define your structures as, as composite steel or pre-stressed composite beam. You can just even go to box girders and all the kind of cool stuff you can do. And you can even go for railroad bridges. And you can even import your own box girder section from a DXF file. So it has a ton of amazing stuff that you can do. It can even in the loads department, if you check the load section, you see that there are a lot of loads that you can apply and you can even categorize them into different design stages. So there is a lot of amazing stuff that you can do in Mila Civil. It is a very good software when it comes to bridge design. So this is basically the first thing I would think about if I want to go to the design of bridges. However, this is not the only software that exists and I want to show you other alternatives to that. Another alternative to Midas Civil is CSI Bridges. And in CSI Bridge, this is made by the same company that has created ETABS and SAP for you. So you might be a little bit familiar to the Computers and Structures Inc. Uh, it's incorporated. It's basically the company that made ETABS and SAP and SAFE. And this software is no different. You can even see the regular design wizard that you can open and you can basically, for example, ask for a quick bridge and it will do a quick bridge for you. You can select the layout, you can select the superstructure, what kind of box girder you want. You can even check and you can even edit and change the section. This is the box girder that is used. So you can immediately notice from those softwares that they are just created for a singular purpose, which is to design your bridges. It's totally different from Autodesk Robot because in Autodesk Robot, it is a general purpose software. You need to explain to it what a bridge is. So it's kind of falling short. Now here, you can even just add your own sections as DXF files, we will cover that later. So this is yet another software you can use. I'll just hit OK here and just click OK just to show you what happens. And if you click OK, you will notice that the bridge is being generated. It takes some time, but uh, well, the bridge is aligned. It's seeing me a second, it's still loading. 
Okay, the bridge has been defined and you can see this line which is the pre-stressing tendon profile and I will explain to you what a pre-stressing tendon profile is in the theory because the pre-stressing tendon must follow the uh, bridge. Of course, here you can see that it has an abutment one, abutment two, an intermediate column and uh, we will talk about the different things in bridge analysis in a separate video series and this is going to be the announcement at the end so stay tuned for the end just don't click away and uh, yeah it's it's amazing you can just add your components if you want to add sections you want to draw your own section you want to add your uh, material you can add tendons here like tendon properties and it should be the 1860 megapascals it's still loading it has loaded them you can add a new tendon property and you can change the grade of the tendons of course, here I'm going to use the LRFD, but this is something I will explain later, but you can see where this is going, right? You have the loads here. If you want to add the truck load, the lane load, the specific truck load in the bridge, you can make a super elevation, which is very useful. This is not usually in robot. A super elevation is basically a bridge incline because it's like in a curve. So you can see how amazing those softwares are and what kind of capabilities they have in comparison to other robot. I'm not putting the general purpose softwares under the bus. What I'm saying is that those are, as the name suggests, general purpose. This is highly specific, so we need something like this. In the analysis, you can do your cases here, and you can even schedule stages. Stage analysis and design is something that is really high level, and I might explain this in theory later. In the design, of course, you can make a design report, check out all the code preferences and code design requests. It is something that you really can check out, and all this stuff is something we may cover later. This is for CSI Bridge, a, a software from Computer Structures Incorporate. It's basically the same people who did eTabs and SAP for you. The last software I have for you is Structural Bridge Design. Now this is from Autodesk and you know what kind of software giant Autodesk is. Now uh, this software is also once again in an Autodesk-ish manner. You can check your design code ash to lrfd and if you click ok you can get immediately the gui of the software once again this is a specific specialized software of course since it's from autodesk you will see that this can connect to autodesk robot if you go to calculate you can see that there is a create robot structural analysis model so there is some interconnectability between autodesk structural bridge design and autodesk robot you can actually create a structural analysis model from it which is kind of nice however According to Autodesk, this is being used for small and medium-sized bridges only. This might fall short when it comes to complicated box girder bridges. Of course, here it's kind of different from Autodesk Robot because it seems it looks like the STAD way of doing things where you have, uh, I mean, if you know STAD, Bentley STAD, there is a, back in the day, there is like a menus that you can click and define. For example, in the materials, you can just click here and add and add, a, for example, concrete, and then you can select one type of concrete. Of course, those are very important. You see, in general purpose softwares, it's seldomly mentioned how important this stress strain curve is, but in bridges, it becomes very important because this plays a part in the analysis of said bridges. So you can just add it and you can even add a tendon uh, pre stressing steel 1860. Yeah, there it is. It's of course, if you're wondering why it's specifically those numbers, it's because of the Ashto code. And I will be talking about those later. This is what specific softwares do. Now, what am I going to do upcoming? Uh, this is the announcement here at the end of the video. You see, in the video series, I know that not many of you have access to Midas. Some of you may have access to the CSI suite, including CSI Bridge, and some of, and most of you would have access to Autodesk Structural Bridge Design. Because if you have access to Autodesk Robot, and I know that my viewer base is interested in Autodesk Robot, so I'm assuming that if you have access to Autodesk Robot, you also would have access to uh, Autodesk Structural Bridge Design. So what I will be doing is I will be launching a video series about Autodesk Structural Bridge Design, explaining the basics of it, and explaining both its advantages and shortcomings Basically that, this is so this is a video series I will be launching. In parallel, I will give some uh, theoretical uh, lectures in the bridge design series, talking about the different code checks that you have to do when it comes to designing bridges and then trying to get them all together. Now, spoiler, this software, we will struggle a little bit when it comes to box girders, but I will show you how you can do this. And I will also be covering uh, CSI Bridge. 
and Midas. Now, CSI Bridge, I have access to. Uh, structural bridge design, I have access to. But Midas, I need to think of a way of getting access to this legally. So I need to check out what the company, maybe they can give me a, I don't know, educational license or something. So I'll, I'm still talking to those people. With that being said, this is what I wanted to say. We are now ab about to approach the modeling. And I want to explain the softwares from the basics up and then start modeling our example. So once again, to reiterate, uh, we are going to use specialized software in our bridge series. We are going to branch now. Uh, there will be robot videos still. I will not stop videos. And I'm, I'm, I'm now winking at our new subscriber, Jesus Candia. I'm not going to forget about robot. I'm going to continue that. And now in the bridge series is going to cover some theory parts. Whereas uh, another series, Autodesk uh, Structural Bridge Design, is going to start and we are going to majorly cover Autodesk Structural Bridge Design. Now, once again, to reiterate, we are going to show the basics of the software and how to model simple bridges. And then we will see what we can do with that. So with that being said, and in the end, I want to give a software sized shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as a supporter of the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos hopefully on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. Of course, I hope that you enjoyed the video and you found it beneficial. If you have enjoyed the video, then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting and so on, especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.